Here we go, Moni, almost there. All right. Well, hey, everybody, how are you? Woohoo! We are live on Facebook. So excited to be here. We are excited to talk again in this great form about the power of art. And we're talking about collage. What do you use when you collage? Amani is going to be sharing her secrets. So make sure that you get your stuff out uh, and take a photo of the different things that she's going to be sharing that she uses. And if you can, we're going to have a little demo as well for you to be to begin to do some collage or get some salt if you can. Um, any kind of paper, if you have it, that's for a mixed media, watercolor or a canvas small would be great. Get some salt out, get some forks out, get whatever you can. Go into the kitchen, rate it. Anything else that they need? Toothpicks. I mean, come on, foil. Anything else, Amani? Um, those are all you can use. Um, shaving cream. Um, Woo. Yeah, those are all good ones. <laughs> Come on. So, so today we're, we're talking about the power of when we're in God's presence, what can we use in order to create a, back, a backdrop, a background? And, uh, and discuss, first of all, how mixed media can enhance your art and share all the supplies that, that you'll be using as well. So let's go into that part. So again, guys, this is going to be so much fun. Lord, just bless Amani as she shares. Give us tools about what we can do to enhance our art. Uh, help us, Father, to figure out stuff that we use every day and how that can be a part of the process of our collage in art. So Amani, go for it. Yeah, texture, using texture and collage and mixed media is one of my favorite things. I just, I like getting my hands in it and feeling like, oh, I'm really making something. It's kind of gives it more of a three-dimensional feel, you know, than just painting a painting. You get to kind of create in another way, which is really fun. Um, I love, when I was first starting out, my painting skills were not great and weren't very developed. I was much more comfortable with drawing because that had been my main medium. And so um, I used to even just draw my picture first and then collage that onto the painting and then add more abstract elements around it or use collage um, to kind of fill in some of the blanks, so to speak, for just, yeah, creating a more complete image. And then I just really had fun experimenting with different textures. So I, one of my very favorites is Crackle paste. Which one is it here? Ooh, crackle paste. Crackle, crackle. Oh. Now, if you guys see furniture that has a crackle pattern, this is what this will do. So she's going to show you a painting in just a second about how she used that. And again, if you have any questions, please post that in Facebook and we're going to get to you. So go ahead. Yeah. So this is Golden is the brand and it's crackle paste and it's like a light fluffy paste that you spread on and then when it dries it cracks so it kind of gives that like if you imagine a desert with no water it gives it that kind of look so I use this a lot in um I've probably at least half my paintings I use this so I have a question for you how thick should that be on the canvas should it be um, like a, just a little bit I mean tell me how thick because if people do it and how long they should wait for it to crackle. Yeah, I'll demonstrate later with how thick, but um, the thicker you do, the bigger your cracks. So it's kind of fun to have a variety, some spots that are thick, like maybe a quarter inch thick. And then in some spots, I usually do it pretty thin and it'll just give it a really faint kind of crackle. So, and it also depends what I'm, like if I'm doing a beach, then I'll have some heavy spots that fade, you know, where the water would go fade into a really thin. So it's, you know, got that feel of the sand by the ocean. Can, can you layer the crackle paste? Like, let's say that I have a painting already. Mm -hmm. Can you then put the crackle paste over it? Or do you have to have it be completely barren before you use it? I mean, what is the protocol? 
Yeah, you could, um, it is opaque, so you can't see through it. So anything that you put, you know, if you put it over something, you just won't see that part again. So that can be helpful. <laughs> that can totally, let's repurpose it, forget the gesso. Let's exactly. go back to the crackle. <laughs> it's a really good way. All of these are actually a really good way to repurpose canvases. Come because, on. You know, sometimes you get those like gobs of paint that you can still see even yeah. if you've painted over it. Yeah. So that's a perfect way. Um, to cover it either with crackle or with some of the other mediums that we'll talk about collage it's yeah give you a fresh start yay okay guys come on you guys are learning already okay tell us what other ones you're going to be using what so other mediums this is called light molding paste take and a photo of that everybody come on get out your camera get really close has take a photo everybody it has a similar um, texture to the crackle paste, but this one isn't going to crack. So this is great if you have, um, if you want to make your paint go farther. So if you love to use texture like impasto or just like heavy texture, but you don't want to use gobs of paint, you mix this with your paint and it'll make it go a lot farther. And so you can build it up heavy. I'll show you how that works later and then i love this this is glass bead gel Ooh, glass bead gel i'm so excited to try that it's kind of a like a glue and then it has these really microscopic little glass beads in it that are clear so um i like to skim it like along the edge of a water line or something and it gives kind of a sparkly reflective but it'd be super fun in an abstract or just anywhere you think of it's just does it cool. does it dry clear amani yeah the glue that like holds the beads together dries clear and the beads are clear so you can mix it with a transparent paint or you can just have it on its own um and then there's extra heavy um extra heavy gel this is the semi-gloss i believe it comes in a gloss as well and maybe a matte um and this is kind of like a heavy glue it's really good for collage i use it a lot for collaging also good if you want a really thick heavy paint you mix it with this and you'll get a thick, heavy paint type. You mix your paint, your colors with this, and then you can kind of build it up on your canvas for a fun texture. So cool. And there's pumice gel. You can tell mine is very well used. <laughs> it's got the, golden, the golden is running with color. Yes. But it's called um, pumice gel, yeah. P-U-M-I-C-E. So this is also sort of a glue type thing that's holding it together with um, pumice, but you could also create the same thing with glue and sand or glue and salt. So I use this in my oceans a lot or just random places. But <laughs> I want to throw texture. Yeah, so those are a few of the mediums that will use different things that you can add in. I believe that Liquitex paint also probably has their own version of these same. Golden's my preferred brand, but pretty sure that Liquitex has their own crackle paste and molding gels as well. So. Yeah, and guys, if you wanted to like order those, like Dick Blick mm -hmm. online store would have those um, in the UK. Uh, Susan, if you could put in there a place that you guys use to get that too. Um, it's just like a, for, for us here in America, a lot of them you have to order online because some of the craft stores like Michael's or, or other places, they're going to have a very limited variety, but you can get that stuff all on like, Dick Blick, Jerry's Artorama, those kinds of places. So 
Yeah, have fun shopping. Yeah, it's it's your Amazon birthday. has a few of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So. Oh, that's awesome, guys. Isn't this fun? I'm just so excited. Okay. And you were just, and now again, any questions, let, let us know. But you were just doing a conference in the, in the San Francisco Bay Area. How did that go? It was awesome. We, I was in Mendocino, so just north of San Fran, and had 22 students there at the YOM base. And they were not art students, so we're just, <laughs> um, some of, just a few of them were artists already and so just getting them activated and talking about prophetic art how God uses that to express his heart and uh, we did several activations just getting them set free from stuff you know lies that have been holding them back and lots of activations they're going next week to an event in san francisco that's the new age festival so they'll be doing prophetic art ministry so got them ready for that so yeah awesome time i love it you know part i think of our heart as we do all of these create forums uh amani and i is for you to understand like what you're creating it's going to change someone's life i was just in Tennessee, woohoo! And the Appalachian Mountains it was so beautiful there. But I was on a retreat where I was speaking about creativity, and we did the same thing, Amani. We had workshops. We had raku. I did a raku piece. Uh, so I have a little pottery piece that I did. Um, we did weaving. We did. There were so many different workshops. And when I would speak every night, it was like the Holy Spirit just came because God wants to release the creatives out of the box. So when, when you're hearing about what Amani is sharing today about her story, it's meant to impact and influence people. And so when you, when you're creating, it's, it's not just like you're learning technique, but you're learning how to paint in the presence. And, um, and that's what happened when she was at the YWAM base in Mendocino. That's what happens when I was in Tennessee at Eagle Rock Retreat. These are the things that God wants to do is he wants to show us how we can collectively bring creatives together like you, like me, and kind of change the world. So when you're doing these things, God has incredible fruit for you. So so share how you gathered mixed media with God's help. Share about this process because a lot of people need to know like uh, the power of what it means to use a mixed media approach when we, when we create our art pieces. So go ahead, Amani, and share about that. I think that it's just, excuse me, one of those things where um, God loves to see what we come up with. So it's a perfect opportunity to think outside of the box and see how can I express what he's saying to me in a new way. One of the first times I did it, I was in art school um, at the School of Illustration, and they just encouraged us, like, go out on campus and find whatever (laughs) you can find. And I ended up finding, like, the metal base of an old washing machine that had been rusted, and that became my canvas, this rusty piece of metal. And then I used... um, all kinds of things. I created a railroad track out of little pieces of metal and wood. And then I had a canvas mounted to it that I painted a self portrait. And it was so exciting. I was like, wow, it's kind of like sculpture and art put together. And it just, um, I used one of my poems and it all just fit together to, you know, put a visual to what God was saying in my heart about breaking out of the, the poems about breaking out of the confounds of our own minds and being able to see with vision what God has for us. So I think it's a perfect way to illustrate that when you're using materials um, that are unconventional in art. One of the first mixed medias I did was with paper towel. (laughs) I covered the whole canvas in paper (laughs) towel And then I did like, it was like a Zorro slash through it and like I ripped it apart in the Z. Um, And it was really cool because 
there was a lady in the church named Z. She was like, that's my oh, figure. <laughs> <laughs> so that was so cool. I was not thinking about that when I was making it, but it totally was an illustration to her of breakthrough for her life. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I love it. I, I feel like part of it, guys, uh, for me, when we think about this whole thing of mixed media too, Imani, is this thing of repurposing things like, Repurposing is super important, like repurposing our heart, our writing, our um, things in our house. Uh, 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 I, I know my mom, she would take the, the, the packaging little, po- you know, uh, little pockets, like the little, you know, where you could like crack it on, hit it, and it would open up with air. And she would paint over that. And then she made this scene uh, at the beach and it looked like, you know, waves and stuff like that in there. And it was so beautiful. But she repurposed that with driftwood, with shells. And it was like, what? Like it, it was because it was a part of what we love about nature too, that got into the art. And it was so powerful. Yeah. So amazing. Yeah. I love it. But, so Lord, we just released people today, wherever you are, whatever, what, whatever city you live in to find things within nature around you that can really transform your art. And that would be like examples to you, whether in putting it on there or watching it or seeing it to God, to see what it could do and to see what you want to do through them. So powerful, Amani. I I love this. This is so fun. Um, What we want to do now, guys, and again, if you have any questions for Amani on mixed media or about her her process, what, what we're talking about, uh, um, I, we're going to go ahead and we're going, we're going to go into a demo right now. And in this demo, what we want you to do is just like, let the presence of God come. She's going to be walking you through this. And so, um, go ahead, Amani, and, uh, let's get going. All right. So this, I have a wood panel, um, but you can do the same thing on canvas. So I've just pre applied the crackle paste to this wood canvas so that you can see, because it takes um, at least, depending how thick you've applied it, it takes a couple hours for it to dry. So I do it usually the day before. Um, So I've put sand and rocks in here too. This will be a beach scene. I'll probably add the resin to this part of it later on. But what I'm gonna do is show you first how you apply it and then how you paint it once it's dry so make sure I get my right tub of stuff here so I've got my crackle paste I like to buy the big tubs because I like to use a lot (laughs) so you buy this on either amazon or blick.com um and popsicle sticks are great there's no like rule as to what kind of tool you apply it with so it's really foamy almost like a shaving cream so i just get a gob of it and lay it on there Just spread it across. So I'm doing, I like to do the outside edges extra thick if I'm thinking about a beach scene. Um, I do thick. I don't worry about having smooth. You could try that. You could see what happens. I like to have the built up texture of the paste as well as the crackles to play with. So I've probably got it about a quarter inch thick in some of these spots, maybe not quite. I'm just building it up, smoothing it. It's really fun feeling. It's really creamy. And then like for a beach scene or any kind of to fade it into my painting, I like to just kind of smooth it out and then I'll even use my finger. just to smooth the edges, but it totally depends on what you're... I did a painting um, of the, well, several, but 
I did one for Yellowstone of Yellowstone. And so I um, did the bottom with the heavy texture and then it like faded into the mistiness of like the... Um, so, so in the heavy texture right here that you're using, the heavy texture body, you're just creating more of the texture like the waves right now. This is kind of like the sandy shore. Okay. Are you going to add crackle to that too? This is the crackle piece. Oh, that is the crackle. Okay. So this is what it looks like when it's wet. You can't see any of the crackles. Gotcha. And then this is when you could add sand. If you don't have sand, you can try salt. Um, I just kind of smush it in there and it stays. So any other kind of textures that you, or like things you want to try in it, it's a good time to put it there while it's wet. Let me just do some over here. Come on. Isn't it fun? She's playing. Isn't that cool? So then it'll dry on this one. I did sand and shells. Oh, so you put some shells in there too. Yeah. So here. Oh, wow. Come on. That beautiful. But you have the crackle too. Did you put the crackle on after the. So I did it just like I just showed. I put the crackle paste on and then I just stuck the shells and sand right into it. Okay. Gotcha it dries and it kind of, it just holds it right in place once it's dry. Wow. And then I'll That's paint incredible. this. So where'd my paintbrush go? I like to use just a big paintbrush. Um, it's good to have a contrast. So since this is the beach, sorry, I didn't get my, I'm gonna do a dark brown first that's gonna sink into these cracks. So I'm gonna get the crackle wet first. Just, this is just water. And then I'm going to put a drop of paint on it. This is fun. You can already see it. Oh, yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. And then I'm just going to smear it out. So that's blue. What this kind is of black? That, or like this is called Van Dyke Brown. And what I'm doing is I'm working it into the cracks there. Gotcha. So yeah. that it creates a contrast. So that's Van Dyke Brown Golden, right? Yeah. Fluid. And then sometimes I'll use a paper towel to just lift up any extra that I don't want, but it's the dark is going to stay down there in those cracks, just really accentuating it. Yeah, you can get a crackle at Amazon in the UK. So okay. just look for the golden product. You can just look online. So she's using the Van Dyke Brown. It's the golden fluid acrylic. So see that right there? And then she's adding a little bit more. So she's just putting it right there and then she's adding water to it. I love this. This is so fun. So I'm just smearing it all over here, letting it get into those cracks. Yeah, so cool. And then you just keep, um, I mean, you could just leave it like this and it would be pretty. Yeah. Uh, but then I also, I like to just keep building. So I'm dab off some of the darker spots. And then um, this is a good time to use like a dry brush technique um so just getting a little bit of white and rubbing that across will bring up some of those just so if I, 
Yeah, it'll bring up more of the cracks and it'll get more variation in it. Yeah, just highlight the texture even more. And that's just the white golden that you're yeah. using right now? Yeah, that's just white. But it'd be easy to just keep playing with that. I'll show you. So this is one I did at church for Palm Sunday, um, representing like the path Jesus walked coming into the city. Beautiful, um, Amani. So you used, were those rocks that you used down there below? Yeah. So you put the rocks there and then you put the crackle paste and then you didn't use the crackle paste in the middle as much, right? I smoothed it out a little bit. So to not... make it more very, and then you added the golden leaf as well, right? Yeah, I've got gold leaf in there. Perfect. So I use greens and browns and tans. Just yeah, you can so. see that. It's beautiful. So that's one example of like when you, you know, spend your time playing with just the variety of. Now in the painting that you're doing now, are you going to put the ocean above that? Yeah. So in this one, it'll be like an aerial view of the ocean. Oh, sweet. I'll, I'll do the. I could use that right now, but for this, what I'll do is just do a wash. I don't even worry about priming um, my wood because I don't mind if the paint kind of absorbs into it and gives it a different, but so this is just a dark blue. And then this is where I kind of go back and use some of the techniques we talked about before with mm -hmm. either salt or spray bottle. I do this with my crackle too. I'll spray it with a spray bottle just to get different effects and textures. And what color blue is that for people that want to know? Is that thalo? This is a new one I just got. I've never used it before. Anthroquam, anthroquam. The put your, oh gosh, here, let's take a little photo, everybody. Wow, anthroquam, okay. Woohoo! I've never heard of that before. I hadn't either. I was looking for an indigo and this is what came up. It's not, it's kind of like a dark ultra marine or. It is almost like a, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's really pretty. Like Thalo blue has more of a turquoise tint to yeah, it. Yeah, this, this has more of, the, more of a Prussian blue, really. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, it's kind of fun even when the blue drips into the yeah. sandy shoreline, just, just because why not? A lot of this effect will get covered up with resin um, in my layers, but I still love to just do it. Yes, <laughs> so I love it too. Have the depth. So I'm just using a paper towel to remove some of it to give it kind of a modeled look. Wow, it's beautiful. Ooh, it's gorgeous. And then what she's guys, then she'll put resin over, but that's another demo. Not today, but yes. Yeah. That's absolutely stunning. Wow. And then I love to use gold leaf in my paintings. So um, you can either get it already crumbled. These are just pieces I picked up off the floor, or you can buy it in full sheets, which are like these squares. You can also get silver or copper. So you'll see in a lot of my paintings, I'll have just random little pieces of gold. So right here, I'm just using crackle paste. Um, so she's building up with crackle paste and then she's putting in the, the gold. Yeah, I'm just using it as my glue. What actually what I should be using is this extra heavy semi-gloss that we talked about before. So this is clear. So I can put that down 
and it won't um, interfere with anything that's already there. I'll put some, let's see. There's some gold here. So it's just like this. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just smearing the kind of blue. This. So you're putting it right there and then you're gonna put the gold in there. Yeah. So you stick it on and then you let it dry and then any pieces that are are loose, you just brush off. So cool, yay. So like in this painting here, have these giant ones. I've put gold in there. Oh yeah. Into the texture. Mm -hmm. And then I've also used the sheets to cover this whole side, side of it there. Oh, that is so cool. And you used, did you use the modeling paste to glue that on? I use modeling paste. I use um, drywall mud with this one. So this whole thing is texture here. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got drywall paste. Um, I think that's the main. And did you collage in the, you collage in the words first? This one I wrote onto it okay. instead of collaging, but this would also be a good way you can take um, now no when they want to write to on something what's a good pen to get to they get just like i mean what what are your favorite markers this is my favorite let me just take a photo and so everybody can see that you guys see that right there take a photo what is it called posca at p-o-s-c-a yeah and so these come in all different sizes i've got huge ones like this one. Is it like water or is it oil? It's like a paint pen, but way better than those ones that you get like. That yes, I know. Do, do you have to get those online? Yeah, I order these online. They might have some at Michael's. And then for gold, this is the very best. Oh, hold on. Let me take a picture of that. What's it called? This is Krylon and it's 18 karat gold leafing pen. So that's Krylon. Did you hear that? Gold leaf pen. Make yeah. sure that you get that Krylon. And you can get that on Amazon too, guys. So a lot of this stuff, whether you're in the UK, whether you, wherever you are, you can you can order it on Amazon as well. But there are some places like Dick Blick, uh, Jerry's Artorama, other places that you can get those. But try your craft store locally too. Um, just if you, if I mean, sometimes they will have those, yeah. Wow, girl, this is amazing. So when you were writing that with calligraphy, you used the Posca pen. Yeah, this one is the gold. Um, I used the gold pen for that one. Oh, got you. Uh, let's, let's see it again, because then we can see the difference. So you used a gold pen for the writing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, so you had to put it very, so you put the modeling paste underneath and some light Van Dyke brown and uh did you use what else did you use on that as far as colors it's got like a peachy um kind of color in it which i think came from like a um burnt sienna okay burnt sienna got you um and uh, my favorite um Quinacridone nickel azo gold. This is one of my very favorite colors. Okay, guys, get that one. <laughs> Come on, Jesus, yes. It's yes. the most luminescent. It's amazing for adding life to skin tones, to any kind of like peach skin tones. Um, actually, I use it in every skin, I think, because <laughs> it has to have it. I agree. It's I, I love that one too. I use that a lot. That's so good. Really good for glazing and yeah. So now like after you finish a piece, like what you're doing right now, 
Um, you put either resin on it or would you put a, what would you put on it to seal it for people that are doing like mixed media? Yeah, there's, um, well, Golden also has, um, I'm just looking at my shelf of spray paint. So I use either like just a Rust-Oleum. If it's like this, um, then I'll use a matte finish on the texture and then over the gold leaf, I always seal it and use um, a gloss so that it maintains that glossy look. So Golden does have a spray varnish, but you can also just use Rust-Oleum like from Home Depot and it works great too. You got it. That's awesome. Woo! This is so fun. Anything and else? Anything else you want to show us? I can show you the, so I'll show you on canvas. Um, you guys have any questions too, let us know. This is fun. Yeah, so this is the light molding paste. And this is a good way to make your paint go farther. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm using an old paper plate, but I'm just gonna get a gob of it and put it on my plate. And let's see, what color should we do? Mmm, decisions, Holy Spirit, show her. Yeah, let's do this turquoise. So this is, this is also one of my favorites. You can tell you can't read it, but it's turquoise. Um, I use this with my resin paints a lot. That's why it gets so dirty. But so I just put a few drops of fluid paint in with this light molding paste and I'm gonna mix it up. It's so pretty when you mix it. Oh, wow. Isn't that gorgeous, you guys? And this actually creates, it's like having a heavy, not too heavy because it's foamy, almost like a- um, Yeah, th this is the lighter golden one. Yeah. So you can use that even for foam with more white or cream color. Yeah, so it gives you, you can just keep adding as much paint as you want to get it to the color. Dark, yeah. And then you can put it onto your canvas. And it's just like having a really heavy paint and not, it, I only use like three drops of paint mixed with this medium. And so it extends your. The life of your paint. Yeah, exactly. And then this is a fun way you, if you just kind of spread it haphazardly, get some really heavy texture in there. Mm -hmm. And then you yeah. can go back with contrasting colors and accentuate it. Yeah. And I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I'll just show you the glass bead gel. Oh, the glass it. bead gel, yes. Now again, this, this, this dries clear, everybody. So when you add this in, it dries clear, but it gives it a little bit of a glimmer, a glimmering sheen. Yeah, so this is, it looks white, but it's just kind of like a glue that dries clear and you can put it up. I don't know, put it wherever, but it's got these tiny little, almost like beads of salt. You know how salt has that sparkly look? Glass, mm -hmm. That's what glass bead gel is. It and you can it a sparkly look. Oh know. yeah, oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. So, and that dries clear, right? Yeah, so that'll dry clear, and so then you'll just see kind of the sparkly. You'll see some of the color. aqua turquoise color shining through, yeah. but you'll but you'll see a lot, a little bit of the texture of the of the shimmeriness of the wave. The yeah, foam. That, and you, you can tint it as well. Like if we put if we put the turquoise into the glass bead gel.
then it'll just tint it the same. Right. That's so cool. And you'll, you'll have that cool texture. So a good, if you don't want to buy the glass bead gel, a good way to try it is like with a clear Elmer's glue type thing, any kind of glue, clear glue, and then put salt in it. See what happens. Be creative guys. Get out your Elmer's glue. Come on, get out your salt. Woo, you guys. So cool. Look at that. That is so cool, Amani. Wow. Are you guys having fun? <laughs> I'll just show you to a collage real quick. Um, yeah, show us the collage. So I had this really fun, thin, like hand pressed kind of paper. I actually like, used that for my wedding invitations. <laughs> well, it's probably, it's something that they could get that paper like at Michael's or any, you know, just a thicker paper than a yeah. uh, regular size paper. Okay. And then she, and then this is a poem of yours, right? Yeah, this um, this was a scripture I used. So for the um, Leaders Advanced Conference was really cool. I got a clear picture in worship of what to paint. It was the side profile of a woman looking into the future. Um, I meant to have it ready so I could show you online, but... Um, <clears throat> So I knew what size canvas I wanted, 30, 30 by 48. And the only one I had already had stuff on it. So I um, tried like priming it and cover it, but it still had this weird texture showing through <laughs> that I didn't like. So I'm like, what could I do? Uh, so I, I knew I wanted the feel of the ancient. I wanted what God been talking to me about is the ancient and the new. So taking like the foundations of his word and how he's like doing a new thing still in the church. And so I thought, Oh, I can create like an ancient feel with tissue paper. So I just crumbled up the tissue paper and then put it onto my canvas as my background. And it made this really fun wrinkly look. And then once that dried, I painted it tan. So it looked like an old piece of paper. So this was just white tissue paper. Mm -hmm. And then did you, did you use modeling paste put to like make it stick or how did you have it stick on the canvas? I think I tried several things. <laughs> I first, I used the wet primer to make it stick. So I just like painted the primer on there. It's just like wall primer and then stuck the tissue paper on there. And I think I actually kept building it because I needed a, I needed at least two layers of the tissue paper to really fully cover the background. So I liked the white primer mixed with it. So I kind of used the primer <laughs> as my glue for that. Um, and then I wanted to have several scriptures mixed in with it. So I paint, I, I printed those onto this paper and um, I put the gold leaf on. So before the service, all I had was the tissue paper background and the gold leaf line, because that's something that's tricky to do on stage. <laughs> and then God just gave me this whole blueprint basically for the painting and um, so I used, I should see if I can bring it up for you guys. Maybe we can do that in the class after. Um, I used also tissue paper. I drew a picture on it and collaged that on. I used this with collage and I painted the woman's face on it. And so I did that to um, just get, I also used um, collage pieces of a map in there is actually from LA. I wanted to talk about what God had done, like in the Azusa Street Revival that represented like the foundations of what has been in this region. So I collage pieces of that map into it. Um, so I did all of this during worship, adding the collage scripture. Um, I had pillars representing the like royal palace that I had drawn on tissue paper, collaged that on. 
and then painted the portrait of the woman and she represented the bride of Christ like looking into the future um, through God's eyes which was the gold line so that was really fun <laughs> oh my gosh that's amazing I I have Rowena dear Rowena wants to uh wants you to hold up the blue again I think it was that new blue that you got yeah anthracone it's called anthraquinone blue try saying that fast five times <laughs> uh, uh, Rowena. Um, so that's that. And then, uh, Lori, can you prep your canvas and paint later? Absolutely. That's what we usually do. Yes. And could you clear seed beads? Could you use clear seed beads in place of the bead gel? It's the same thing, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that would, yeah, you could definitely do that. You guys having fun out there? Share this with other people. This is so fun. Just now what are you putting on there, girl? So this is paint. I'm just gonna smear it on there. That was like a yellow ochre. I want kind of a tan kind of thing that'll look nice with my paper. So I'm just mixing white in with it. I'm going to end up with kind of a beach. I've got my yellows and blues. This is completely random, but I want to show the collage. I put a lot of paint on here, so I'm just spreading it out. So did you, how did you um, put the a palm on? You just, I just used my printer. All right. uh, yeah, just printed it right on. You can actually print onto tissue paper as well. You can look No at way, that's yeah. crazy. So fun. I was like, what? So you just, you cut out a piece of tissue paper that's just a little bit smaller than your normal computer paper and tape it. You get it as smooth as you can, tape it around the edges. And then you run that through your printer and it'll wow. right on it. So that's how I did the um, the palace. I used like a blueprint type looking picture, printed it onto the tissue, and then um, and then I drew over it to enhance it. But so this is one like this is super simple actually. So I got my paint on there. Just this is just the tan base, and then I've got my extra heavy gel which is like my glue and I'm just putting it on there just to give it a good grip to make sure it stays. And then taking my foam and then just collaging that right in there so cool Amani and when you get it wet since this paper is really thin you can it'll kind of look like it's just part of the painting so I'm just taking a little bit of paint and spreading it over the edges and blending it in kind of which gives it that old world look too, which is what you're trying to do. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's awesome. So you can also like, you could even print a portrait on a piece of paper and collage that into your painting. Totally. You, could. you can use like these Posca pens or you can use charcoal, um, you know, anything to go back in and enhance, bring any lines back on, you know, back out that you want to extend. Yeah, totally. Wow, this yeah. is so cool. Um, God, are you guys having fun out there? You guys are going, yes, I'm going shopping today. Yeah. I could see it all their little eyes are getting so excited. I, I think that one of the things that happens when we start to collage is we get outside of that place of, of doing everything like just like linear or just like 
in our in our mind and we start to think more abstract and we start to think more of a building a canvas of building what god is speaking through the poetry through the art through the different mediums um if if people were going to like if you could give people that are if this is new okay raise your feet your hands right now wherever you are or i want to do that and i would love for you to um to just give people three or three to five basic tips on what they can do to really start to move into doing more of a background that would be with mixed media. So just go ahead and give us your best. <laughs> give us your Amani tips. All right. Uh, I think first tip would be think about what feeling you're trying. So like with the ancient and the you know, I, that was a good base work to think of like, okay, I want an ancient feeling. <clears throat> Some ways of doing that would be like with a Venetian plaster or with this tissue paper. Um, so just thinking what kind of things will give it that old world type, type feel, or, you know, it could be whatever theme you want to build off of. That's a good way. Um, you can think of like, what am I not comfortable painting or drawing? How could I use something else <clears throat> Sorry, to fill that spot? Um, and then of course, I think like just with everything else I do, it's that co-creating with God. So if I'm feeling stuck, it's trusting, sometimes asking him like, what do you yes. want to do? other times is trusting your instinct um like i had no idea that the tissue paper was going to turn into the perfect backdrop for that painting but um it was just trusting god that um he kind of had he had his hands in it um i did the video that we shared um just to kind of talk about what we were going to do today, I did that painting to bring awareness to the need for clean water in Africa. And so the crackle paste was the perfect way to, to, to you know, to show the dry barrenness of the land. So the, that was a three foot by four foot painting. The whole bottom half of that is the crackle paste that I painted and then resined over to give it that water effect. So is really just thinking what's the message that you want to communicate and how can I do this in an outside of the box way and usually the best way to figure that out is by asking God because we are limited you know by our own experience so problem solving is always a really good way to get creative like how am I going to cover up this old ugly canvas <laughs> or totally you know, yeah Get out your crackle paste, guys. Get out your stuff. Um, get those. I, I think part of it too, in just closing that that I love, it's knowing that we're on a journey and knowing that that journey is with not just a brush, but it can be with other things as well in the in the midst of what we're creating. And it's also giving yourself permission to try something new and to experiment and to realize like, Amani, the first time you did this, it didn't probably turn out great. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it's like you, you have to be willing to like paint, like what Simon Bolt says, a thousand ugly trees before you could paint a really nice tree. And, and it, but you have to enjoy the process because you're learning to create with God versus getting discouraged. And so a lot of people I feel with mixed media get discouraged because it doesn't turn out the way that they wanted versus no, no, no. You're just exploring and you're seeing what God's doing try out some of these. I mean, try out one or two guys. My, my heart for you guys is to just try out like maybe two or three of the things that Amani said, whatever your budget would allow, and then just doing it and then giving it away and seeing what God does. If you love poetry, guys, this is the ticket for you to blend your poetry with your art. It could really turn out magnificently. And, uh, and so I really want to encourage you in that too. Um, so uh, again, we're hanging out like, so please, please, please post about what you're doing and let us see your work on my Facebook, Instagram, all that kind of stuff. But the second thing is if you really, really love this, 
join Create Academy. Woohoo! Uh, go to TeresaDedman.com, join Create Academy. The link is in there. And, and what I want you to do is, and let's give them half off as well. So uh, Karen, go ahead and put that in the post. There's a, a link for half off of the first month su subscription. And at 1030 today, Pacific Standard Time, that's in a half an hour, we're going to be having a focus group in Create Academy where we're going to talk about what Imani just shared and we're going to create together and do some fun activities. So check that out. We want to coach you. We want to help you grow in that. Why? Because it's always fun doing it together. I mean, Imani and I both know going to the YWAM base in Hawaii, her going to Monterey and speaking in that area at Mendocino, me going down to like, well, actually east to Kentucky and uh, and that and Tennessee, that area. It's like, guys, everybody wants to create. You need to create. And there's different ways of creating where we can all learn from one another so that we can hear God's presence and see God's presence and see it modeled. So Amani, I want you to pray for people because they might, they, they're going to have to cross over the chicken lane. Like, oh my gosh. And no, like you can't make a mistake. God is going to bless you with what you're going to create. And it's going to be um, a process that will lead you to greater revelation. It's just like when you learned about God's love, it wasn't like you got it the first time. Am, am I right? No, it's like you, it was a process of learning that. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's pray for people right now. Yeah, God, thank you for <clears throat> all these awesome creative people that are here today. Thank you that we're made in your image and you are the ultimate creator. And so there's absolutely nothing that we can't do with the infusion of you in us. And so I just pray for a release for each of these people here today to think outside of the box, to try things that they've never tried before, to let go of fear and just step into freedom and fun and expression with you in a new way. I thank you, God, that you always show up for us, that you reward risk, not success, as Teresa always says, that you're so good um, in just honoring us where we're at. And so, yeah, we just break off fear and put our trust in you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. And we thank you. Like, I, I was just feeling, Amani, I was just thinking of, like, um, the process of uh, when, when we do uh, a mixed media, it's a process because you have to wait for things to dry. You have to, and in the same way that we're all in process. So as things are, as you're experimenting with, uh, with what you're doing, know that God has you in process and that it's okay for it to be messy and perfect because that's what we're learning about ourselves. So have fun, everybody. Amani, love you tons. Hope to see you up in Reading soon. Talk to you guys soon, guys. Love